Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Christine. I'm a college student interested in fashion and experimenting. Since we probably don't have a lot of time going online shopping during this quarantine season, I'm going to try use what I have to style the mom jeans the most French way. So this is how it will go. I will try on different tops, jackets, and shoes to see which brings out the Frenchness the most in the outfit. And at the end, I will try to conclude some useful tips for you guys. Alright, without further ado, let's get into the video. This was what I was wearing that day, just a tank top and a pair of skinny jeans. As you can see, these are pretty tight on the butt and leg area. Let's change into some mom jeans then. Looking like jeans the mom used to wear in the 90s, they are looser, straighter, and overall comb shaped. One thing to note is the waistline. They are super high waisted, which could make your butt appear longer than it actually is. Let's hop into some tops. The first one is a cartoony oversized t-shirt. I think the baggy fit is very cute. However, from the picture to the right, you can see that even very comfortable French outfits pay attention to their proportion. The comfiness lay in the texture and material, and should not compromise the waistline. The next top is a Brandy Melville inspired butterfly turtleneck. I really like the crop length as it elongates my legs, but the logo just seems a bit too juvenile and high school sweetheart. It seems to me that French style emphasizes the pattern and texture in the outfit rather than the logos or graphics. The same goes for this top. This sweatshirt has been one of my favorites to go with mom jeans. As you can tell, the just a tiny bit oversized length covers up my butt without looking sluggish, and it just makes my leg look super straight. However, I have to say, this is not nearly as French as I want. Okay, now we're talking. I love this puffy sleeve top. The v-neck shortens my torso and the high waist elongates my legs. I love the design. However, I do find the fluorescent pink to be a bit too bright for this pair. As you can see, this shade of denim usually goes better with more saturated, darker colors. Next, we have this nude tank top. I have to bring this up because it has such a unique v-neck design that shortens my super long torso and makes me more proportioned. I think v-neck is definitely a key element in French style. Next, we have a black cami. I think that could be a great addition to a French style wardrobe if worn correctly. As you can see, if I don't tuck it in, it naturally leads the, your views to the awkward triangle area formed by the creases of mom jeans, which may not be ideal. But when I tuck it in, my torso appears shorter and now I have longer legs. But it seems a little bit too boring if this is the whole outfit, right? Let's add a blazer to it like all these French girls are doing. This black blazer from ASOS is relatively new to my wardrobe. It's pretty soft and unstructured, but it looks pretty sleek and let's give it a try to pair with some shoes. Okay, this first pair of beige slippers slash loafers is a bit too structured for the soft material of the top. As you can see, what determines the atmosphere of an outfit, chic, bossy, feminine or whatnot, are sometimes the details in the texture. Onto some black flats. It seems that compared to the American style that emphasizes the feminine curve with skinny jeans and high-rise skirts, French style tried to achieve sophistication and sleekness by the straight leg silhouette. So I'd say this is a yes. Let's put on a white blazer. This one compared to the previous is a bit heavier and more structured. So when we pair it with the black flats, it does not go so well. Also partially because of the lack of the color match. Next is my favorite pair of flats. I especially love the color and the idea of adding a bit of red in your outfit. I have seen little red accents in a lot of gorgeous French outfits. It's just such a feminine touch and lively color that makes you go, wow. Next, we have the loafers again. As you can see, the simple color match and texture match is at work again. These just look much more put together than the black ones. Okay, time 
for a little sweater. It also covers up half my butt, which is great because mom jeans have the super long ass effect. I love the round shoulder design, and whenever I wear it, I feel instantly de-aged like in those fan fictions. Let's put the black flats into work. I think they go nicely with the black cami, but because of the v-neck, I personally think the color match isn't used to its greatest. And when we change into the white loafers, now I feel like a perfect sandwich, and the outfit just looks cleaner and sharper. Okay, now going back to the red slingbacks, I decided to put on some red lipstick and it was a major success. Color match used to create a great distance. Check. Red lips and pointy toes for a feminine look. Check. This is definitely one of my favorites from this experiment. Next, let's change into some blouses and shirts. The first white blouse features a tiny v-neck and puffy sleeves, and there's a bit of waist compression in the middle. It's also one of the classic French outfit pieces, so let's give it a go. The black flats kind of failed miserably, making my 5-3 height look like 3-5, and it just looks a bit out of nowhere for me. As you can see, most people pair at least a bit of black somewhere else on their body when wearing black shoes. So, I paired them with this heeled sandal with brownish animal print, and that looks much better, partially due to the heel height, which forces my legs to be a bit straighter, and partially due to the lightweightness of the sandal, exposes mo much of the foot area, making it more of a summer look, which matches the light linen material. Next, we have this black blouse. I love the design of this shirt even more than the white one. Black is naturally slimming already, the gigantic v-neck and the incredible waistline. Is this the heaven for black blouse? When we pair it with the black flats, it looks unsurprisingly well. The high-waisted design in the blouse kind of overshadows the flats shortening effect, and the flowy soft textures are really similar as well. When we add the red slingbacks, it looks great too, in a different way. If the black flats shows more of a put-together, next-door neighbor kind of feel, this is more erratic, surprising, and feminine, just as the saying goes, red lips and red toes makes good hoes. Finally, we end with the leopard shirt. First, I'm going to show three ways of wearing this shirt. The really bad way is to just put it on as it is. As you can see, it's pretty tight and goes straight up and down until it covers half of the butt, leaving the second half stucking out, which is kind of awkward and makes you look shorter. The slightly improved way is to create a v-neck by unbuttoning the first one or two, which visibly make it a little bit more breathable, but as you can see, I still didn't do anything about the length of the shirt. The finally not so bad way is to tie up the bottom of the shirt. This really creates a high waistline and makes the tight shirt feel less formal and rigid and more vacation suitable. This is also a very common design in French styles. And to further enhance the casual look and to match the color, I paired it with the brown sandals. Compared to the conventional way of wearing the shirt, I can say this looks much lighter and more romantic. Alright, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed my little experiment. If you guys are interested in watching more videos of mine, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you guys next time.